Hello everyone, uh, sorry for the delay in videos, A, I'm rubbish um, at making YouTube videos, um, and B, I've just been sort of doing art and a couple of commissions and things, so I had loads of time, but thanks to coronavirus, uh, I'm basically housebound anyway, so I thought why not make some more content. So, uh, one of the things I get asked a lot is about the lighting side of my work, which um, is probably the one place I feel like I maybe have a bit of expertise. As I mentioned before, if you don't know, I'm a cinematographer um, by trade, that's my job. So, um, if you don't know what that is, it's basically for film and television, um, it's sort of mine and the director's job to kind of think about you know the look and feel of, of a film or music video or an advert uh, and then yeah like, I, I'm kind of in charge of uh, bringing that to life basically so I'm kind of uh, work with the camera department and probably most importantly the lighting department to create uh, looks and, and feels basically for different kinds of films so yeah I've kind of got 10 years of experience of, of doing that so um, I think when kind of starting out in 3D I was pleasantly surprised by how similar the principles are and the way that the lights work so it gave me a big advantage so um, it really helps in terms of the way that I build models knowing how I'm going to light it means that I know how much detail I need to put in in certain places um, and what I can get away with um, it's the main sort of mistake or not mistake, one of the main th things that I think people need to work on in terms of if they're starting out doing this kind of thing um, I certainly haven't mastered it there are artists out there who are significantly better at it than I am um, but yeah it certainly meant that I was able to kind of advance a little bit quicker um, so I thought why not share some of those things that I kind of take for granted um, so you can implement them in your own work um, so <clears throat> I won't bore you too much about the technicals of uh, lighting from a sort of mathematical point of view but there are a couple of things that are definitely worth knowing um, things like uh, inverse square law which is the, the kind of the way that light falls off from the source to uh, yeah to, to the subject so you can see here as this light kind of gets further you know as we get further away from the light itself this area is darker than this area and the closer you are to the light the more significant that fall off is so if I bring this closer uh, even though that's like slightly brighter now the difference between that part of the model and that part of the model is pro you know will, will be more substantial um, difficult to kind of show you here but the principles work fairly similar um, in yeah in, in 3d software so um, yeah, that's kind of one of the important things. It's the difference between using, say, a light like this and using, um, you know, this being uh, set to, to be a sun um, because it's a much harder light and there's no fall off. So, if I, you know, if this is set to the sun module, um, the difference between the top of the model and the bottom that should be zero, I would have thought. Um, th there's no fall off. Again, because the sun is 93 million miles away from us, um, we're a lot further away from the the, the, the the kind of steepest part of the fall off of the light. Very boring, complicated stuff, but it, if you're doing stuff set in space, it is much better to use the, the sun module because it, it's a more accurate, you know, more accurate look. But um, yeah, I, for, for, for this, for stuff in atmosphere, I quite like using these. I feel like there's, I get a lot of control out of them and stuff. So I have sort of pre-lit this scene. So what I'll do is I'll probably start turning off stuff and turning on other things. So yeah, this is just obviously a ubiquitously flat top light um, which is fine for working with but obviously the model's pretty ugly um, so another important principle is, is the direction of the light if if, you know, if, if the light itself is, is pointing you know in the same direction that the camera is something we try to avoid in uh, film um, just because it takes out kind of all the interesting shadows so say if this was our uh, this was our angle a light coming from the front here would be pretty boring. Um, good if you're working with models and you, and you want to get rid of blemishes and stuff, but for things with detail, you know, we'd, we'd lose so much detail. Whereas 
you know, if our angle was um, towards the light, we, you know, we start getting much more interesting, uh, interesting shapes. We're getting these shadows. We're getting this sort of darker area here. Um, so that's something you always want to kind of try and look out for, like ways in which you can light towards your camera, um, and yeah, not away, you know, not away from the camera like that. Um, some things it works, but um, yeah, as a general rule, that's that's the first thing I'm thinking is like my lights are pointing towards where the camera is looking. Um, so if we get rid of this for now, um, we can start looking at these other lights. So. Um, Obviously, like this is set in atmosphere, so the first thing you know is obviously making sure that your uh, world is, you know, set up so th there is some light coming from it. Um, this just helps fill in, fill in the gaps and stuff, whether you know where sunlight isn't going to be, but you know, helps kind of give that feeling that light's bouncing around. Um, often, in the same way that I'm trying to look to do it in film. Um, kind of magic hour light is always kind of the sweet spot so um you know for, for exterior so that kind of low warm light is something that i've always loved in terms of photography and i always find it's a good place to start um in terms of my art so for this that's basically it you know what what i set up um so yeah i think kind of it's always nice if you can um yeah, like, you know, especially with buildings, if you're looking at kind of one third of it like this, um, I always like to start with a sort of warm, um, kind of like you know, low um, <coughs> sunlight, and and you know, play around a little bit with the kind of warmth that you're after. Um, this is far too bright at the moment, but yeah, if I bring down. kind of see that the way that kind of sunlight's just making one side of the building just feel a little bit more interesting um it's a good place to start i think again you know there are lots of different ways to to, to light, a, light an object but you know if, you, if you're just beginning to kind of work with your model and you kind of want to try something out like i think yeah the sun you can never really get wrong with the sunset um another thing i try and do just to kind of take this up one more level from this and you see there's a lot in anime is just like start playing with the shape of it um, which is quite easy to do um, with these so you know you can rotate these lights so you start you know you start cutting off um, you start cutting off say where the bottom of the lights you know where the light starts and ends so you can really start to say okay say there's you know there's more buildings off camera here that are blocking it you can you know you can just basically choose this part of the light um, ignore what it's doing on the spaceship there but um, and as you as you move that light closer and further away from the subject that line will become harder and softer um, so you see here obviously that's a super sharp and realistic line but as we kind of move it away you know that will become softer uh, and more interesting so yeah again very simple sort of principle um, good for buildings, uh, big spaceships, that kind of thing. Um, and you know, you can always bring stuff in from below, you know, to fill in these gaps, make them a little bit more interesting or whatever. I think sometimes if you're looking at the third of a building, it's worth thinking about the fact that that light would probably um, would probably bleed over onto the other side of the building. So you know, you can. I just added another light, um, another light there. I just copied it over, and you can. Um, yeah, you can play with the height of that until that starts feeling right. But again, like <clears throat> I like leaving these sort of darker, shadowy areas here. Um, I think yeah, that contrast between colour is, is just another tool um, that's really useful. Um, obviously, I would need to sort out what's going on with the spaceship, but um, yeah, this wouldn't be a, a you know a bad place to start. Um, the other thing I've got you might notice in the background is this here which is I often I think there's probably a much easier way to do this but I kind of like the control that it gives me um, but I can you know play this in as essentially the sky and use another panel um, to start giving the feel of you know of a gradient coming from below um, and again so, you know same thing I can move that around until 
get the gradients in the right place and move it away from the source until it's you know, softer. Um, and then the, obviously you've also got the added control of changing the color of the material behind. So if I want to, you know, that to feel more blue, I can. And I it means I don't have to change the sort of general color of the scene, you know, and change, you know, because that would affect, you know, the fill fill here. Um, you need to keep those things reasonably close together, otherwise it's going to start feeling weird. Like if this background was this blue, um, you know, the fill light would also need to sort of mirror that slightly more um but you know between those three things you know you've got a lot of control there you know over your fill your background light and you know these sort of feature lights here so you know as you as you bring down the world light you know you can see the effect that that has and if you know if you want everything to play a lot less you know you can increase that and drown out the you know so i think yeah between, between those three principles you have a hell of a lot of control um in terms of the look and the feel and there's no right or wrong in that you know at all it, it, that is really down to personal preference but like very easily now without having to really you know move anything i can really start playing with the look and the feel and and you know never underestimate as well like the importance of these colors you know these little highlight lights here um that really draw the eye and and you know really affect how the viewer kind of perceives the colors so yeah i think that's a basic breakdown of yeah, ways that you can, um, ways that you you can quite easily play with the the general look of a scene. Um, I'm sure there's lots of things that people like. I'd love for people to get in touch and say, "Oh, there's a much easier way to do this," and I know you can do gradients with the scene and stuff like that. Um, so if there's anything you feel like would give you the same thing much more efficiently, I'm always looking for ways to do things quicker. Um, but yeah, I would say you know, focus on your on your lighting because it will cover all manner of sins. Um, a lot of my models, you know, photographed from, you know, photographed in different ways with different lighting would, would just wouldn't, you know, wouldn't work because there isn't enough detail. Um, so, yeah, I think, I, you know, I think lighting really is something that, that that should be focused on, and it can really, you know, make it make a huge difference. Um, a huge difference to images, and I, I, I certainly don't think if I if it, if I didn't know as much as I do about lighting, I, I certainly would still be kind of I'd probably still be on my donut um, because yeah, the lighting kind of really did did speed up the you know how quickly I could work um, and how long it was before I was kind of making models that I was happy with. So yeah, feel free to ask me any questions. Um, I'll try and make more videos. I need to do a video on what I do in Procreate. Um, because adding clouds and stuff to, um, yeah, drawing, you know, painting clouds in over these lights and stuff really kind of starts making them look a lot more interesting. Um, and yeah, just like general sort of photo editing techniques, but, but this would be, um, yeah, roughly how I would sort of, yeah, what work at this point. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much for all the comments and support. Um, again, Reddit, people on Reddit have been particularly lovely um and i'll uh, i'll try and get some new content out soon because coronavirus is uh, is um limiting what i can do outside of the outside of my apartment so um yeah you might start getting inundated with stuff so hope you enjoy thanks a lot